So Manchester United have gone back second in the Premier League there with a 3-1 win against Newcastle. But it's not exactly a game where all of us are going to walk away from it absolutely buzzing. Uh, and maybe that's me sounding spoilt by saying that. But again, we saw our defensive frailties tonight. It wasn't a classic performance. Bruno Fernandes got another goal and assist. Marcus Rashford got a goal and assist. Their two individual moments turned the game for United. But United would never... Uh, we were in control, after certainly after 2-1, when Newcastle effectively down tools. But let me know who your man of the match was for me. As much... It might be Luke Shaw, I don't know. But let me know what you think in the comments below. But I suppose that you have to be really happy at the fact that I don't think United played extremely well tonight at all. And we've come away 3-1 winners. That in itself is always a good sign because they always say it's a sign of champions to, to win when you're not playing well. When United did not play well tonight, I do not think. But we won 3-1. As I said, it was down to individual moments of quality. Up until Rashford's goal in the, what was it, the 30th minute, we were just we had nothing going forward. It's so easy for, for teams to defend in the low block against us because we've got nothing on the right wing. So therefore they can double up on the left and we can't really do much about it. Even with Luke Shaw's overlapping runs and Marcus Rashford when he plays well, like he did there in that in particular moment, we're good down the left. But it's just frustrating how 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 much of a lack of quality and threat that we have on the right wing, even if Dan James didn't get a goal tonight. But Rashford's moment there, look, Rashford is so much better as an instinctive finisher when he has no time to think about what he's got to do. He finds the back of the net most of the time. Uh, but it's just that when he, when he has time to look up and time to really think about his finish, he's not as good. He's not as naturally as quick at that. But then the big issues came after that 1-0 goal from Rashford. And the same problems defensively. And I'm sorry, but I thought Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got that wrong tonight because Dan James was in the start of 11 tonight because of how well he played against Real Sociedad. It was deserved. He scored again. Decision vindicated. But if Dan James was in that start 11 based off merit, then why was Eric Bailly not there? Why was Dean Henderson not there? Instead, Solskjaer reverted to the players that he still trusts. De Gea, Lindelof and Maguire. And we saw the same goddamn issues. Short corner, we're switched off, gets put into the box. Could De Gea have come from it? Some will argue it. Could Maguire have headed it out better? Certainly. Instead, he headed it back into a bit of a dangerous position. And then, say Maximum makes no mistake with the finish. Could De Gea have done better on the finish? Again, maybe. But I personally think that there's no confidence among those, among United's, just among United, whenever those three play together. I don't, I think that confidence is shot. De Gea's confidence is shot. And the player's confidence in De Gea is shot. And I don't know whether it's going to come back or not. I really personally do not think it will. And I think, look, if we're going to try Dean Henderson, give him five or six or seven games. Give him a run of games. At that point, we'll then know whether he's good enough to be our goalkeeper or not. And if he is, brilliant. We've got Dean Henderson from next year. Sell David De Gea. If he isn't, we need to get a new goalkeeper in. We need to give Dean the chance to prove himself. And that needs to come with a consistent run of games because United, Solskjaer brought the problems on us there tonight by playing, in, in my opinion, switching that back three. 72 hours ago against Real Sociedad, we were very comfortable against a much better team. Here against relegation fodder, we were largely crap defensively. And it's just, I don't think those three will, will work together. I'm sorry, but uh, maybe I'm overreacting. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But just to see how well we played against Real Sociedad. So that's 72 hours later. It's infuriating, man. And I, I don't... Everybody can make mistakes in life, but repeating the same mistake is just, it's just, it makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, and I don't know what we do to, on, on the training pitch in terms of defending, certainly from set pieces, but the same issues keep coming up, game and game and game. And you have to switch things, you have to change things. And if Dan James can get in that start 11 based on merit, then Bayern Henderson should have kept their place too. My opinion. Now, going into that second half, uh, Dan James. It was a smart finish. It was a head down, laces through, found the back of the net, and fair play to Dan James. He, he's a player who clearly comes in bursts. Uh, when, it, when he's having a purple patch, he plays excellent. And, and I don't, maybe excellent would be a bit, bit of a stretch tonight, but he offered something on the right wing, whereas we normally don't have anything. So therefore, it was better than what we normally have. Uh, and Dan James worked right off the ball. He's, he's hilarious. He's like, you remember Boris Johnson in like um, Soccer Aid, when he literally bumbled, fell over, and 
basically took out a player. That's what Dan James does. When he's out of possession on the ball, running back, he just runs into players. And that's how he stops them. It's quite funny, actually. But Dan James, well done, mate. And that 2-1 was the difference because after that, Newcastle, they sort of went, in, went into themselves. They didn't really offer much of a threat. United were a bit more comfortable. I thought Matic semi-grew into the game. Fred, that pass that he tried and kicked into nowhere. That was horrendous. But I think United, it, at that point, it was, it was comfortable. Newcastle weren't really threatening too much and nothing really changed as the game went on. And it was another little individual moment of magic from Marcus Rashford that won the penalty. Willock went down. It wasn't a rash challenge from Willock, but it was a, it was, he went down in the box. And if you don't get the ball, you get the player, it's a penalty. Done. And Bruno Fernandes buried it. Another goal and another assist from the man who just cannot stop contributing to goals. It's insane. Same with Rashford. Four goals, four goal contributions between them. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant from, from those two. In terms of the individual moments, in terms of a team performance, we didn't see anything resembling a team performance there tonight, but the quality of our individuals there got us out of jail. And it was 3-1, and then Shola Shortai came on for his debut, 17, another, born in 2004. Man, what am I doing in my life, man? He's, uh, if he, yeah. Incredible. In <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's the United way. I love seeing it. You, you love seeing it. We've got Ahmad Diallo coming through from Atalanta. Let's see what he can do. Hopefully he'll start against Real Sociedad. But Shota Shorta, that'll be a game, a little moment, a memory that he will never, ever forget. Let's see what he can do in the coming years and maybe he can follow in the footsteps sorry, of Marcus Rashford and Mason Greenwood. For me, man of the match was probably Luke Shaw. I would say he was the only consistent player for the full 90 minutes. Always a threat down the left. Some great crosses from corners. Some excellent overlapping runs. And Shaw's form now is not a purple patch. This is just this is the new level that Shaw has found. And he's working and operating at. Arguably the best. He's created more chances this season than Andy Robertson. And if Andy Robertson is held as the sort of gold standard of left backs, then Luke Shaw right now is better than him. Luke Shaw deserves to get into the England team. And for me, he deserves man of the match tonight. But... Of course you're happy. United won 3-1. We're second in the Premier League. Good. But the measure of United's success is not beating relegation candidates. Although given what's happened with Fulham and West Brom and Sheffield United, maybe maybe it should be. But it was a, it was a game where United were expected to win. It's a game where United won. We didn't play well. But for me, it's, a, it's the same issues. Until we sort that main issue of our defence, we're just going to keep repeating the mistakes. And the pattern's going to keep repeating itself. And for me, that probably comes down to personnel. I think Maguire looks more confident in himself in, when he's not alongside Lindelof and doesn't have De Gea behind him. I think their lack of confidence affects Maguire's lack of confidence. And people say, I'll oh, defend him. Look, Maguire cost us 80 million. He's on a huge contract, a long contract. Maguire is going nowhere. So even, look, Maguire clearly could be better, but I, I've got the awareness to understand that Maguire is going nowhere. So why am I going to massively slate Maguire 24-7? It's not going to, we're not going to get anything from that. What we are going to get is trying to get the best out of Maguire. And for me, that will never be with De Gea and Lindelof as a trio. I don't think so anyway. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But 3-1 winners tonight. For me, man of the match is sure. You can give it to Fernandez. You can give it to Rashford. Let me know what you're thinking and what your reaction is to my comments, I suppose, on De Gea, Lindelof, Maguire and United's defence because the problems were there again tonight. But United's individual quality going forward was enough to bail United's defence out. And maybe against a different team, it could have been a different scenario. But three points, you've got to be happy at that. Let's see what happens going into next week. But make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new.